It's all about the bass. What the bass? Alright, thanks for watching and today I will give a proof of the product rule and it's actually a very very elegant proof, you'll see. So our goal is show that the derivative of f times g is the derivative of f times g plus f times the derivative of g. So think of it in terms of punching. First you punch f and leave g out and then you don't punch f but you punch g. That's if you like. But we're not interested in, well, we're interested in the math, but here we're interested in the proof, more importantly. So step one, what does it mean for this to be the derivative? Well, fg prime of x, by definition, it's the limit as h goes to zero of this function evaluated at x plus h minus this function evaluated at x all this divided by h, so different quotients, but uh, what does it mean to be fg? It means it's literally f times g, so limit h goes to 0, f of x plus h times g of x plus h minus f of x times g of x over h. And here comes this really cool trick. So we, we somehow want to rewrite this in terms of four smaller parts, which we can control in a better way. And for this, let me draw you a picture, which it might not represent, you know, reality, but it still, it will give us the correct formula in the end. So imagine you have this rectangle where you have, you know, you have a smaller rectangle inscribed in a big, bigger rectangle, like those Russian dolls, and sort of the, the vertices are f of x, f of x plus h, g of x, g of x plus h. Okay. And with this rectangle, let's, I can't do this cool thing, but uh, let's compare the area of the rectangles. So, notice the following. The area of the big rectangle, if you think about this, the side length is f of x plus h, like the base is f of x plus h, but the height is g of x plus h. So the area of the big rectangle, of big rectangle, is equal to f of x plus h, g of x plus h. And again, I'm telling you this might not represent reality, but because f of x plus h could be smaller than zero, but in the end it will give us the formula. Okay, now, on the one hand, the area of the big rectangle is this formula, but notice, the big rectangle is made out of smaller rectangles. Let's call them 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so let's see what each of those areas equals to. So that's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. But look, 1 is just the base is f of x, the height is g of x, so the area is f of x times g of x. That's for 1. For 2, let's see, the base is this thing, which is f of x plus h minus f of x. Minus f of x. And the height is just g of x. So this height here is the same as this height, which is g of x. Okay, for the third one, the base it's all about the base, but the base is <laughs> f of x plus h minus f of x. And the height is g of x plus h minus g of x. So plus g of x plus h. So, uh, sorry, f of x plus h. h minus f of x times g of x plus h. 
minus g of x. And lastly, for the fourth one, the base is f of x, and the height is g of x plus h minus g of x. So, that's f of x times g of x plus h minus g of x. All right, this is very complicated, but it is, you know, a progress. A progress is good. What we found in the end is that f of x plus h times g of x plus h is equal to f of x plus h g of x plus all this other junk. Okay? So now, in particular, what we want to do, remember, our goal is to calculate f of x plus h g of x plus h minus f of x g of x over h. Well, that's very good, because now we arrive at step two. Limit, remember what we wanted to calculate, fg prime, that's limit, h goes to zero of f of x plus h, g of x plus h, minus f of x, g of x over h. And now, let's use this formula. So, that's equal to a very long formula. <laughs> Go eat a sandwich, meanwhile, or something. So, that's f of x. Success, kid! I wrote it all in one line. Divide it by h, and I forgot something, actually. Minus f of x, g of x. Why? Because this comes from this part. But this is very good news, because notice, we have f of x plus times g of x plus John, blah, 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 trash, stuff, stuff, minus f of x, g of x. And now the most exciting part of the proof, bang, bang. Bang, bang, into the room. Da, da, da. Now let's decompose this a little bit. Notice this is actually very good news because here we have f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So on the one hand here we have f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h times g of x. Look, this smells very derivative -y. you know. In fact, this is f prime of x. And look, the same spiel here, f of x, g of x plus h minus g of x divided by h. Again, f prime g plus f g prime, so that's very good news, plus, well, this weird term over h times g of x plus h minus g of x. Okay, so now let's write, write down what this means. This is f prime of x times g of x plus f of x g prime of x. Well, this is f prime of x. But look, this term, if you want, because g is continuous, this actually goes to zero because it's really just g of x minus g of x. And this cancels out, so this is zero, and therefore this whole junk just disappears, and we are left with, remember what we wanted to calculate, fg prime of x, and we find that, lo and behold, that equals to f prime g of x plus f of x g prime of x. And we are done! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs>